Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having a great Christmas so far. So just a quick disclaimer to start off with. If you guys can hear a lot of noise in the background, it's because uh, the people across the road are having their front garden renovated because of course they are, and it just so happens to be on the day when I finally get an opportunity to film, because of course it is. So, yeah, if you can hear that noise, I apologise. They shouldn't be long, but I just want to get this video out in time for Christmas. I've got a lot of content coming just before Christmas, and um, yeah, got a lot of great plans, and hopefully I can get all of that out in time for you guys. So, in this video... We are finally going to be taking a look at the entire Doctor Who action figure character options K1 robot collect and build figure wave. As you guys know, I previously announced on the channel that I had fully completed the wave, brand new in their packaging, and I was really looking forward to reviewing these figures for you guys. And to be honest, as an individual, I'm just so glad to have them in my collection and as a Doctor Who fan or, you know, classic Doctor Who fan. So, yeah, I, I'm just so relieved to have them. These figures came out way back in 2009 and I sadly never picked any of them up. I do remember seeing them in Tesco's, funnily enough. I remember seeing the Fourth Doctor and I remember seeing the Sea Devil. But, um, yeah, just never got round to picking any of them up, which was a shame. So I've had to pay extortionate money for them now. But I'm so glad to have them and I cannot wait to get them out of the box. So without any further ado, guys, let's take a look at them individually in the packaging, all of the figures that come included in this wave. So the figures that are included in this wave are the 4th Doctor from Season 12, which includes an interchangeable solemn hatless head, the sonic screwdriver, and the lower chest piece of the K1 robot. The 5th Doctor from Castrovelva. Now, it doesn't specifically say that it's from Castrovelva, but because he doesn't yet have the celery on his coat, that's really the only thing it could be from. He also does come with his sonic screwdriver and one of the arms of the K1 robot. The Sixth Doctor from Season 22, he also comes included with his Sonic Lance and the biggest piece of the K1 robot which is the chess piece. The Sea Devil which comes included with his little ray gun and also the waist piece of the K1 robot. Broton the Zygon Warlord with his little device that he uses to summon the Loch Ness Monster and the head of the K1 robot. SV7 and D84, which were initially supposed to be a two-pack, but instead were given individual releases due to the lack of space to fit the accessories in, and they both come with a leg each for the K1 robot, but D84 has the additional accessory of the Vok robot head bomb. And last but ever so not least, we have Magnus Greel and Mr. Sin from the Talons of Wen Chiang, including a swappable masked head for Magnus Greel, a little knife for Mr. Sin, the other arm of the K1 robot, and even the ray gun to go in the arm. So the packaging for each figure comes in with this really, really nice blue backdrop featuring the Gallifreyan logos and a very vortexy effect. However, behind the window display and perfectly shaped to it, you have this really, really awesome, fiery, almost regeneration energy look with a sort of star and universe background. You have the traditional RTD logo from 2005 to New Year's Day 2010. You have a nice publicity image of each character displayed at the front with a brief description and the story that they appeared in and also the generation of Doctor from where the story was from. You have a very nice view of the character also displayed with his accessories and it all just comes together really really well. The packaging maintains the same design for all figures in the wave however with both the sixth doctor and Magnus Greel and Mr. Sin the packaging has to be slightly larger to contain the extra large accessories and the amount of accessories inside and as you can see despite maintaining the same design there is definitely a difference in width and scale of the packaging which is understandable as it would be impossible to cram all of these additional accessories inside this much smaller packaging aside from that all the packaging maintains the same design and color scheme and so without any further ado guys let's get these amazing figures out of their boxes some of you will probably consider that a crime
Okay guys, so starting off we're going to take a look at the three Doctors that comes in this wave. Now, just thinking back to it, these were the first Doctor figures available that weren't the ninth or the 10th Doctor, so this is before even the 11th Doctor figure came out, so this is actually quite monumental in terms of Doctor Who action figures. Now, before this wave, this guy did have an individual, no, I beg your pardon, he did have a two-pack release with a version of the 10th Doctor that came in the Time Crash set. So technically, that figure was the first classic Doctor, and actually the first classic Who figure to ever be released, ever. But these guys were the mass retails, and these were the most common ones to get hold of, so for many people, this must have been a really exciting way to finally get other Doctors besides Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant. So included in this wave are... Some very strange choices, actually, but I think there was a reason why Character decided to go with these three. But we do have included the Fourth Doctor, the Fifth Doctor, and the Sixth Doctor. Now, the Fourth Doctor is an obvious choice because he's the cultural icon Doctor. And I think for many kids, you know, their dads were probably saying, oh, you've got to get an action figure of him. In fact, their parents probably wanted the figures just as much as the kids did. Um, then you have the fifth Doctor, which once again is an understandable choice because he just appeared in New Who, which seemed a very, you know, opportune moment to release an action figure of him. But then we have the sixth Doctor not exactly one of the most popular. Look, he has his fans, definitely, and I fully respect that, but it's just a strange choice, and I think the reason why they decided to go for this was because of the colourful costume. I think they thought that, you know, releasing a Doctor with a costume as um, interesting as this would help the figure increase sales, and I think, yes, that definitely was a smart move, but personally... I would probably have gone with um, the third Doctor or even the seventh Doctor over this one, but still, it's a really, really great figure, so let's take a look at them. So here we have the fourth Doctor, and for some reason he looks absolutely horrifying in this lighting, and yes, I'm just going to say this right now, this is the best fourth Doctor figure they've ever made, and I believe I've said this before previously on the channel. I think in terms of likeness, it is an absolute double of Tom Baker. You've got all the creases in the face, you've got those big glaring eyes and that creepish smile, the hair with all the wonderful texture and the detail on the hat, just very, very good and it's been so neatly painted as well. There's no paint bleeds, everything is applied really neatly and precisely, and the same can also be said for his alternate solemn head, which we'll get onto slightly later on. But also taking a look at his costume, you've got his trademark scarf with all of the colours going round on both sides. It's a nice, soft, flexible plastic, so you don't have to worry about it breaking or snapping. He does come with his sonic screwdriver, which fits very snugly into his hands, and it's all very well and good. Now, I have reviewed the articulation on this guy before, so I'm not sure if I'm really going to bother, but well, we'll do it quickly. So the head can move side to side slightly, but it's hindered by the scarf, and I don't recommend you force it because you could scratch the paint off. The arms do a full 360. You've got the, the bicep swivel, the 90 degree bend on the elbow. All these joints are really tight because the figures are brand new out the box. Full rotation at the hands, you've got a waist rotation, the legs can kick forward really far, got a rotation at the top of the leg and a 90 degree bend at the knee. So good articulation, you know, uh, this is the standard for many of the Doctor Who figures and I can confirm that all of the Doctors do have exactly the same articulation so I won't be going over it over and over again. I really love the paint detail on the shoes, the way it's been given that really nice wash. Uh, the only thing they hadn't done yet, which is what they've started to do with recent figures, is the speckled effect on the trousers, but honestly, that isn't much of a big deal. I even love how they've included the grey details on the pockets, and all the creases sculpted into the coat is wonderful. You've got his striped shirt with his cravat, which is a slightly incorrect colour, but it was still pretty good, and his jumper with even the little chain in there. So, you know, for a figure that came out in 2009, absolutely sensational detail. In fact, I think 
probably the best looking figure that character had released at that time. So to swap the head, all you have to do is very gently just pull on it. Because it's quite soft, it does pull off very easily, and then the scarf simply slides off his neck. Now, unfortunately, this is quite a common issue. You can see where some paint has unfortunately stuck. Also on the face, you can see under the chin, which is a real shame. You can see it's quite badly here. Uh, it seems to happen worse on others, but honestly, when you've got the scarf on, you can't really see it anyway, so it's fine. Then you take his swappable head and then just push it on. No problem at all. Just takes a bit of wearing into because uh, it's new plastic and I forgot to put his scarf on. So always make sure that you put the scarf on and then attach the head. And there you have it. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I actually think both of these head sculpts are very good likenesses to Tom Baker. And believe it or not, these same two head sculpts have been used for many, many years, but they just don't seem to have the same level of detail that they do here. I also love how his sideburns have been painted a slightly lighter colour, but just look at that side profile, like you even see the shadowing in the face sculpt and everything, it's, you know, for a figure that's only five and a half inches tall, the level of detail that has been included here is phenomenal, but like I say, this is all standard for character figures, and you can say that with all of them. So overall, I really, really love this fourth Doctor, this isn't the first time I've owned this figure, and... It might not even be the last, because I've, I have got quite a few of these now. And um, yeah, it's just absolutely brilliant. It's great to have him fresh out of the box, and I can't wait to put him on my display. So next up, moving on to the fifth Doctor. Now, like I say, this is a bit of a strange one, because he doesn't include the celery. Now, the reason for this was actually because... Alduar was worried that the a vegetable being on the character's... A jacket would make people not want to buy the figure. Nothing could be further from the truth because there was actually a huge backlash about this and so this was the only fifth Doctor figure available which didn't have the celery until the Caves of Androzani releases so I suppose something good came of it they could reuse the sculpts really easily. I have to say it's a really good likeness of Peter Davison, however the paint does seem to be significantly softer than we would get on later releases, especially on the hair. It doesn't quite have as good a wash as I've seen on some of the future figures, but the detail and everything is still there and I have to say he has been painted really, really well. I will say his eyes aren't quite as good as the fourth Doctor, but they're still good nonetheless. You have the detail of the question marks and even the red on the inside side of the collar. You've got the cricket jumper where all the stripes have been painted really neatly, unlike my other figure which actually they were all over the place, so yeah, keep an eye out for that when you're searching for this figure. Uh, all of the red lines have been applied really well. There's no paint bleeds as far as I can see. The trousers have been done really nicely with the green and red stripes over the cream colour. His white trainers have a little bit of a wash on them just to dirty them up a little bit. And he does come included with his screwdriver which proves that this is a Castrovelva Fifth Doctor because he loses his screwdriver in the visitation. He gets it destroyed so it doesn't make sense to give the fifth doctor a screwdriver after that story so it's really nice and it differs from the fourth doctors by having a little golden stripe just below the uh, bit at the top so as i said same articulation the head has a little bit more movement but you want to be careful because it's notorious for scratching the paint off there so don't move it too much but yeah articulation is the same i have to say for me personally i think this is probably the least interesting figure in the entire wave, and that's simply because there isn't really much going for the Fifth Doctor's costume. If you love the Fifth Doctor, you're going to love this figure. It's as simple as that. So lastly for our Doctors, we have the Sixth Doctor. Now this is definitely the most visually exciting of all the three figures, and it's really good for me because I have never been able to get hold of a Season 22 Sixth Doctor, only the one in the Eleven Doctor set, which is from Terror of the Vervoids, and I really hate Season 23. So I'm really, really glad to have Season 22 Sixth Doctor because I absolutely love that season. I think it's an underrated gem. 
And I have to say, they have really nailed Colin Baker's likeness in this sculpt. Really nicely painted hair, the eyes are very well done. A bit of a quality control issue with mine, there seems to be quite a few scuffs and scratches on the face, especially under the eyebrow there, so I might try and touch that up and fix it. In fact, I believe we're not going to get this figure again until the budget goes up because this figure is actually really expensive to make due to all of the colors and patterns that need to be applied which makes sense and to be fair they have been applied expertly this is absolutely brilliant you know it's it's a figure that you can keep looking at because i guarantee you there's something else that you'll notice even though you've been staring at it for a while you have his cap badge which isn't as detailed as it would be later on you have his colorful chain there with his waist stripe waistcoat striped trousers and strange shoes and it's really really awesome that he does come with his sonic lance from attack of the cybermen so you could say that this sixth doctor is from attack of the cybermen specifically and i believe the only other time we would get the sonic lance accessory is with the highly rare 13 doctor set version so i'm really happy to have it here because I only have two Sixth Doctor figures so far, and I'm happy that this one comes with the Sonic Lance. That's really good. Articulation is the same. However, this Sixth Doctor suffers from an issue which a lot of them suffer with. However, nowhere near as bad as my other one. And he's slightly hunched forward because I think it's to do with the coat. It doesn't really give the legs a lot of room and it pushes them forward slightly but it's nowhere near as bad on this one as it is with my 11 doctor set version so with them um, some patience you can get him to balance just fine and overall i think this is a really great figure and i'm very very happy to add him to the collection okay so turning to monsters now we have one of my all-time favorites in the form of the sea devil now this is a figure that i wanted more than any of the others when i was a kid and i'm so happy to have one fresh out the box i do already have one of these however he doesn't come with his ray gun sadly he was very kindly given to be my my friend alex but i'm really glad to have one that's minted and yeah the detail on this thing is phenomenal. I love that character have gone for the actual fabric netting instead of sculpting it on. I just think it gives the figure a little something extra. However, you've got all that wonderful detail. They really have made it look like it is like the costumes. You know, they haven't tried to go for the ultra realism kind of look. The only thing I don't like about this figure, I have to say, is the eyes. I just think they're far too animated. I don't think they should be as white as this. Maybe if they'd gone for a sort of more creamish brown kind of color i think it would have looked a lot better now that's just my personal opinion but i still think they're really really good i love the detail on the ray gun which can be placed into his hand uh, you see it has a uh, little handle at the back and it can also be placed into his belt which is how it comes in the packaging which is very very cool now the articulation for this one is very um is very good it's a lot better than the doctors as in you can bring the arms out to 90 degrees because they have t-ball joints you do still have all of the standard articulation rotation legs coming out and bends at the knee and rotation at the feet which is nice and the head has got a lot of rotation to it which is also really good however just be careful because this cloth fabric has a tendency to wear over time and i think when you see people selling sea devils second hand you can definitely tell the ones that have been played with it's so cool that they've even sculpted all the detail underneath which i won't show but He's even got uh, quite some large abs here, so he's been working out, obviously. And they even have um, like sort of a spinal thing on the back there, which is really, really cool. And yeah, love the belt. It's just a soft PVC that kind of clips on the back there. And yeah, it's very, very nice. I honestly really, really love this figure. Now, for those of you who've seen the Silurians from Warriors of the Deep, they are exactly the same body. In fact... If I just bring one in here, you can see that they have just reused the same body with some minor alterations, the same arms and legs are present, but it was a very smart reuse, and I think displaying them together looks very, very cool. So I'm very happy to have this Sea Devil figure, and I'm 
extra happy to have him with his proper ray gun which has really nice gold and silver paint so yeah really nice figure and an obvious monster to go for as it is one of the first well not one of the first but it is one of the most iconic okay guys so now going for a more gruesome looking monster we have broton the zygon warlord from terror of the zygons now you could use this as just a standard Zygon, to be honest, if you're army building them, but it the packaging does say that this is Broton, and he's got very shifty looking eyes, so I'm just going to say that that's him. I mean, the detail on this is absolutely incredible. I love the wash of colours, the darker oranges with the lighter ones. I love the detail of all the suction cups and everything. It really is a very gross monster and i imagine it was very disturbing to watch at the time and i have to say i personally think that they look better in classic who than they do in new who which says everything that you need to know right there so yeah he's got this very nice detail of the silver i'm not really sure what that is if that's some kind of device but yeah a bit of a bleed here which is a shame they could have been a bit more accurate with that but overall it does look fine uh, the articulation is very limited with this figure. The head doesn't move at all because it's all one solid piece. Uh, the arms can do a full 360. You've got a 90 degree bend and a rotation at the hand at least. And with the legs, they can come forward, but they're hindered by the waist piece. Although, to be honest, even though you have this additional articulation here, you can't really get him into too many different poses because... Uh, he's not the easiest to stand, so you kind of have to balance him. But what is nice about this release compared to the only other release, which was in the 2016 Monsters B&M set, so yeah, this guy's quite rare now, is he does come with this little device that they use to summon the Loch Ness Monster. And yeah, it's just brown with slightly textured and silver on the bottom and the top and honestly guys this thing is so small if you were to drop it you probably wouldn't see it again in fact i actually dropped it just before i made this review but thank god i found it quickly um so yeah just be very very careful with this you might want to wrap it in some sellotape or just keep it in a little plastic container if you're moving stuff about you know I would say only get this out when you're going to display him, and this can be placed into either one of his hands, where it's held relatively securely, but like I said, uh, when I was carrying this figure in here with it in his hand, he did actually drop it, so just be very, very careful about that, but yeah, it's nice that character uh, thought to do this, and I mentioned this when I showed off that I'd completed the wave, the fact that they had the thought to include this, you know, and just goes to show you like how much of a golden era it was back then so yeah this is a very very awesome figure and i'm very happy to have him fresh out the box okay guys so next up i'm gonna do sv7 and d84 or whichever d robot you want to choose and we'll get onto that in a moment now the reason why i'm gonna do these together is because they are pretty much exactly the same figure just with a different paint job with a slight difference which i only just noticed recently is the sv7 has an extra sort of sleeve on his wrist compared to the d84 but aside from that exactly the same sculpt it's amazing what a lick of paint will do and the difference it can make so we're going to take a look at sv7 now as much as I love the appearance of these figures, I have to say the articulation really isn't great, which I'll get onto in a moment. But look at that gorgeous metallic silver and even metallic green and just how it it sparkles in this light. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, the eyes have been painted OK, but he does look a little shocked. But, you know, that's it's on a factory line. So, you know, they're not all going to be perfect. It's really nice that they've included the sort of bronze for the communicator device. And then, like you say, you've got all these shiny silvery bits, and then you have this soft PVC overcoat you can see underneath there. So, yeah, you've got this lovely green that goes around here and on the face. So, for articulation, he's got a good side to side on his head, and because this is a soft collar, it won't restrict, uh, it won't restrict anything. You can bring the arms forward, but you don't want to bring them all the way because you might warp this. Uh, there is a bicep rotation, but it's not 
wanting to work for me, which I'll get onto in a moment. A 90 degree bend and rotation. And for the legs, you can bring them forward, but like I say, you don't want to warp this. There's rotation at the waist. There is actually a 90 degree bend at the knee, which is really nice. So unfortunately, and this is being my experience with a lot of character options figures that are older, the joints just seem to be very gummy and they don't seem to want to work. And I'm scared to force them because I don't want to snap the plastic, which is what happened with uh, one of my new series figures. You know, it was a bit gummy. So I thought if I kept rotating it, it would work. And then the plastic just broke off. So unfortunately, that seems to be a thing. So I'm not even going to try and force the joints. But to be honest, I like him as is. I wouldn't display him any other way. The only thing I am upset about is I wish he'd come with the swappable hand that was originally intended. Because he was meant to come with the hand that has the robot deactivation disc in it. But they decided to give that to the robot in the fourth Doctor Adventure set instead. So this guy doesn't really have any accessories aside from the K1 robot piece, which is a shame. It kind of makes him feel a bit cheaper. I'll just knock the camera. So looking at D84 now, as I say, exactly the same articulation. Uh, the bicep works for this one, as you can see. And... Yeah, that's really good. He does come with a bonus accessory, which looks very, very cool, which is uh, the kind of thing that blows up the robots that are in the immediate area. And it's made from a broken Vok robot face. And then on the back, you've got all the wires and gubbins and the sort of microphone handle. It's very, very cool. And it looks exactly as it does in the show. Let's take a look at D84. So I never noticed this before, but he actually has this dark green, which is interesting because I always thought it was black. But as you can see, his cloak is black and all of this is black. You've still got that nice shiny metallic silver and even going over the face details. However, unlike SV7, his eyes are completely black, which is accurate. That's how it is in the episode. But here's the interesting thing about this figure. Now, I want this to be D84. But if you do manage to get hold of more than one of these guys, there is an extra accessory. You also get this sticker so you can decide between the four dumb robots that are in the show. D64, D33, D84 and D88. And from it's been my experience that these little stickers don't really stick on too well. And with SV7, they haven't used a sticker. They've actually just painted it on, which does not look great at all. But there you go. So we'll give it a try. We'll just get this little sticker off and we'll see how it looks. OK, so as you can see, it kind of just lines up. You have to be very, very careful when you're applying this. So you just line up the sticker very gently, press down. And then once you've attached it, I find it's just good to get something and just continue to press the sticker down, you know, just so you've gotten rid of all those little air pockets. It just stands more of a chance of actually sticking longer. But overall, I really, really love these two figures. And we actually got these two figures before we got the standard Vok robots. We wouldn't see those until firstly the fourth Doctor Adventure set. And then secondly, with the glowing red eyes as a mass retail in Wave 2, which I have already reviewed on this channel. You can go check out that video if you want to. So the inclusion of the nice little uh, bomb here with D84 is really good. And I... Despite the troubles with the articulations, I do really, really enjoy both of these figures, and I'm really happy to have them. So last but ever so not least, we have the two legends themselves, Magnus Greel and Mr. Sin. Two characters that no one ever thought we would get action figures of, but character said, screw it, we're doing it anyway, and God loved them for it. So here we are. We have the most rarest, most expensive, most agonizingly irritating figures to get in the entire Doctor Who action figure collection. And here I am lucky enough to have them. So let's start off with Magnus Greel. Now, these figures are drastically different to any of the others in the wave. They have a different sort of sculpt and a, just a different way about them, really. So for Magnus's heads, he can do a full 360 on them and you'll see why shortly but this is the head sculpt that he comes with in the box and as you can see he's got his melted face looking all disgusting with that black wash um 
my eye could have been painted a little better but it's fine it's not too big of a fuss because i am going to go with the masked head sculpt anyway but i absolutely love the detail on his robes i love all this golden brushing with the inclusion of these um i'm guessing chinese symbols on them uh, this is all a soft pvc his cloak and as you can see with his arms he has these extended little bits which when you articulate them actually plug into the back here which is very very cleverly done i have to say so it still maintains that kind of robe look he's got 360 at his hands and he has this very kind of disturbing like he's reaching out like uh, he kind of like emperor palpatine in a way but yeah you've got this nice gold which continues on to the green cloak underneath which is also a soft pvc now his legs don't have any knee articulation but you can bring them forward and back which is entirely pointless which i'll get on to you've got a full 360 at his uh shoulder like i say and you do have rotation at his waist as well but yeah the articulation is not very amazing for this guy but that's understandable because when you look at all of these robes it's like what would he be able to do now the only downside about this robe or at least this is the case with mine is because it sticks out the back here so much the robe actually goes down lower than his feet does and when you try and stand him it pushes him forward now amazingly he doesn't fall over but i wouldn't count on that lasting very long see the slightest nudge uh pushed him now something you could do you could heat this with some boiling water and just kind of hold it like that so that when it sets it sticks out but what i think i might have to do is put him on a platform just so that you know the cloak can still have room to to move and his feet can be flat on something because i don't like this way that he leans forward like that that is a bit worrying but let's try his interchangeable head. So, very easy. Just uh, just like the fourth Doctor, it's on a peg. You just pop it off and it's quite soft, which is good. And you take the alternate head, just line that up and clip it on. And there you have my preferred look of the character now like i say i do love this head sculpt but you only see this very very briefly so this is how i will be displaying him on the shelf and he looks absolutely amazing but let's bring in his little sidekick mr sin now i'm not going to spoil it if you want to know what this jigsaw billy the puppet thing but chinese version looks like go and watch the talents of wen chiang it's not what everyone says it is it's not racist at all those people are idiots it's just a fantastic story and it's one of the best doctor who stories in the show in my opinion and this is a very creepy but well realized monster so he kind of reminds me of the empty child that came with Captain Jack in series one, but he has so much more articulation. He's got the bends at the knee, rotation at the feet. Uh, his legs can come forward, but they're all hindered by the PVC here, which is still quite soft. And his arms can come forward, but they can't do all the way because of these shoulder pads. Still has a bend at the arms, rotation at the hands, which is insane. Uh, it's quite tight, but they do move. Now, unfortunately, like I said, the head on this figure is quite gummy, and I really don't want to force it, because if the head breaks off, I'm going to be very upset. So uh, my Mr. Sin will be staying like this until I can fix that. Maybe a hairdryer might do it, but, you know, it is just a bit of an issue that I've been experiencing. But I love the detail on this guy. I love how you can see the eyes kind of in there, the way they've been painted. It looks like they're... They're just in there, like something wearing a mask. I love the sort of separated jaw, like it's a puppet. It's very, very cool. I love the detail, strands of hair, the braided hair here, and all the nice details on his clothes. Very, very awesome. His little golden robe here. And he does even come with his little dagger, which is awesome. And that can be fitted quite nicely into his hand. So... There you are. Now he's going to shank you. Very, very cool. And as a little added bonus, you can also place the dagger into his little sheath. So if you're worried about losing it, it's nice that you've got a little storage bit on it. Now, he actually stands quite well, which is better than I thought he would, actually. 
So you watch him fall over now. I've said that. But no, he does. There we are. Yeah, he does. He's go. No, he's gone. Uh, he does stand actually really well. It's just on this uh, surface thing struggling. But once you get your balance, you got him and he's really, really good. So overall, I absolutely love these figures. In fact, I have to say, despite their limited articulation, I think these are actually my favourites in the whole wave. And they're just so unique like i don't know if these guys will ever get re-releases unfortunately so if you're lucky enough to have them in your collection you're very lucky if you haven't got them guys maybe consider picking them up second hand i have seen them go for about 25 quid second hand like i say i've got them brand new in the box because i want to build the robot which we'll get onto in just a moment but yeah these were absolutely worth the extra money that i had to pay i really really do love them so yeah really happy to add them to the collection and they honestly will not let you down so now guys for the moment you've all been waiting for we're gonna build the k1 robot so I imagine that once this is built, there's no going back, so I really, really don't want to mess this up. God, these arms are not easy to get in. There we are. Okay, guys, and here he is. Now, this did take me slightly longer than I thought, and that's just because the feet were a bit... Um, a bit difficult to get straight, but now that I have, I think he does stand pretty well. I was a little worried there I wasn't going to be able to get him to stand, but no, we've managed to do it. And here he is. And guys, I can't stress enough just how satisfying that was. That was absolutely brilliant. Now, some of you guys may remember that quite a few months ago, uh, well, actually, I think it was about a year ago now, roughly, uh, just before Christmas, I reviewed the 4th Doctor and K1 Robot B&M set, and some of you may remember that in that video I highly suggested that you go and track down the original, and I can safely say that I think I was right, because straight from putting him together, the joints are so much tighter on this figure. I can bring his arms forward no problem. There's no looseness that really stands up there really well. His head, although it's slightly on one angle, is really, really well in there. His waist joint has got good. It's not floppy. It's not flappy. It kind of just sits where you want it to. Uh, same with the other arm. It's really nice and tight. And you've still got a really good range of movement. Uh, his legs are slightly loose, but, you know, with the way they are, that's to be expected. But overall, this guy just stands really, really well. Now, the articulation is quite restricted for this thing. The arms can go forward and back, and they can also bring them up. And you've got a sort of ball peg at the waist, so you can do that. Uh, you do have a full 360 at the head, and the legs can come forward and back, and this little circle here stops them from going too far. You do actually have ball joints at the feet, and even these little toe clamps which can go up and down. There's also the legs can rotate. You can also do a full 360 with the centerpiece. But yeah, th this is a fantastic toy. Honestly, It. I know the B&M one has better paint. But this one to me has the better articulation and just it's so well, it's not even that it's just the articulation. It's the same for both figures, but it's tight on this figure. I'm not really sure what happened with the B&M version. So just to show you guys at the back, unfortunately, this has been light damage. That seems to happen with quite a few of them, but some of you are going to say, but this is inaccurate, you know, it's red when it should be pink. Yeah, yeah, you're right, but 
it still looks so so cool and actually i think i think the face is more accurate i don't understand why character painted this black and also on my b&m version you can't really see the mouth because this piece has gone up too high so this just looks better to me in fact if i could only pick one to display on the shelf it would have to be this one like that's just my honest opinion i know some of you might find that strange but it's the truth so what i might do guys is somewhere down the line when i actually have all of my toys out from storage i will actually do a comparison of the two on screen if you guys would like that but for now just judging this wave as it is this is an absolutely amazing builder figure in fact if we're being honest guys i think this is the best builder figure that has come out of the character options wave Okay guys, and that is going to wrap up this review for the Character Options K1 Robot Builder Figure Wave. It has taken me about about three years, give or take, to collect and build this entire wave, and honestly, it has been worth the wait, and it has been worth every penny. I think we all agree that this is the best classic series Doctor Who action figure wave of all time and if I'm being completely honest with you guys I don't think this will ever be topped. I'm so so happy to own all of these figures I can cross that off the bucket list now I've done it these will be displayed proudly and happily in my collection along with the rest of my other Doctor Who figures and um, I'm just so happy that I no longer have to worry about it anymore. I've got them. You know, no more will I ever own these figures. Will they ever be re-released? Even if they are re-released, it doesn't matter. I own the originals. And to be quite honest, I don't think these originals will ever be topped. You know, they can make slight improvements here and there, but there'll always be something that makes these original versions worth getting and worth having. So I hope you've all enjoyed this review. This has been a nice little Christmas special video for these figures because we don't really have any more Doctor Who figures coming out anytime soon, except for that regeneration set, which... I'm not really that interested in. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this review. I really enjoyed making it. It was quite um, difficult to open them, shall we say, because it's like there's no going back. But actually, when I sat down and started reviewing these figures, I was really, really enjoying myself because they're just such great figures. So I hope you're all having a great Christmas so far. I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all well. And I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from me drawing jackrabbit so stay safe and happy wherever you are in the world guys and i will see you all in the next one Bye bye